You're not from the government, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. I'll take that. <laughs> Thank you, man. Is this the hand of the Google? Yes. Oh. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and I'm down here in Key West. Um, we are at Hogfish Marina. It's actually where Aaron dibs on bottom slash Key West Waterman docks his boat. And right next to his boat is this boat. That is the, uh, the Yankee Caps, and they do these epic three-day trips out to uh, Pulley Ridge. Um, it's even past the fort. It's, it's pretty far out there. So the guys come on, they stay on the boat for three days, and they just have epic fishing. It's kind of a untapped fishery out there. So they get all kinds of stuff. They get grouper, kingfish, wahoo, tuna, snappers, you name it. So one of the things is a lot of the guys come back from the boat and uh, they give you a number, you call out your fish. I missed that part, but I got here just in time. There was still some filleting going on. Um, and one of the things is that when they fillet, usually the customers have the mates fillet. They take their fillets and they leave behind, you guessed it, heads, racks, and collars. So I came down here this morning uh, to grab some heads, racks, and collars, and uh, we're gonna make something delicious out of it. But uh, it is a lot of people on that boat, and it is a lot of heads, racks, and collars. I'm only one person, so I'm gonna do what I can. Um, but yeah, we got some interesting stuff, and I'm thinking that we are going to make chili utilizing fish. Let's go. size that. <laughs> Staples up, and these guys I'm going to use to make for uh, stock on something else. But we're keeping the racks and keeping the heads. One of the things I want to do before we cook the heads is actually brine them. Now, because these heads are so big and I have four of them there, I don't have a bowl big enough to brine them, so I'm going to use this Yeti bucket. I think it's food grade, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> So for our brine, pretty simple. I just have here sea salt, a little extra sea salt, brown sugar, some bay leaves, and some peppercorn. Now to get all of that to dissolve, we're gonna pour some hot boiling water on top of it. So I have my kettle heating up. Here we go. And now that that's dissolved, just cold water. Because we don't want our, our fish to steam or anything. And in with our fish eggs. Thing is massive. It's absolutely massive. Now, throughout the day, I'm gonna keep adding ice to this because I can't fit it into the fridge. So we'll just keep adding ice, and this is gonna sit, I'm gonna say at least six hours minimum. Alright, I, I lied and somehow <laughs> we got it 
<laughs> Got it to fit. I took a shelf out, so shout out to Samsung. Great refrigerator. Great refrigerator. <laughs> so the uh, fish heads are almost done brining. And instead of smoking them or steaming them or, uh, yeah, smoking or steaming or baking them, I'm going to actually barbecue them to really give them like a nice smoky flavor for the chili. Um, and to get my charcoal started, so this is really interesting. Now, I get sent a couple of products or whatever, and if I don't stand behind something, I don't put it on the channel. Um, but this is kind of cool. Check this out. So, uh, I was sent these, they're uh, Starter King Fire Starters, and the reason why I really like these, and it coincides with this episode, is that what they're made from, uh, the person's family owns a food grade wax paper company, and they make wax paper, and this is all the leftover from the wax paper. So what they do is compact it down, and it makes an amazing fire starter, because it's covered in wax and it burns perfectly. I used a couple of them just to test out, just to make sure that they're good and they're really, really good. So I'm gonna put up the QR code there. See if you can scan that with your, your phone. Um, if not, I will link everything in the uh, description below and everyone from Cooking With Clams, if you use Clams 10, you get 10% off. And I think in a future episode, we're going to work something out and do a giveaway with these because they really are, really are amazing. So we'll get our charcoal started. But yeah, easy as that. They light right up and they burn hot, hotter than normal fire starters that are just wood because of that wax. But really cool product and love the fact that it is made from the waste of another product. That's, uh, that's awesome. Great job, guys. And the wind is not blowing it out. All right. Once these charcoal are ready, we'll bring down our uh, grouper and snapper head, put them on here, cover them, and cook them up. Hopefully I can fit all of these on here. I think we'll be okay. just made it. Now I'm actually going to put this bowl on top so that a lot of the smoke gets trapped in there and so that they cook all the way through. I'm not sure yet if I'm going to flip them or not. I might cook them all the way through just with this lid on. But uh, that's it. In about 30 minutes or so I'm going to give them a check and then we'll get to picking a lot of meat. Beautiful. All right, we're gonna try to save that one. Um, I ended up putting putting the bowl on top just to try to get them to uh, cook through a little bit faster. But uh, we're looking good. I'm gonna put the bowl. I'm gonna flip this guy. Put the bowl back on top, and we got maybe another. I don't know. I would say 30 minutes. They're cooking nice and slow. Flipped them over, put the bowl back on top. Um, yeah. Success. And uh, this was that guy that I almost lost, but look, I mean, hopefully you can see how good that looks. Hmm. 
nice and smoky. We'll give those other sides maybe, maybe only about 25 minutes, and then I'll pull them off and start picking. That was good though. So the two smaller of the heads I'm gonna pull off. They are, they look good to go. And then these two larger heads I'm gonna let go just for a little bit longer, just to make sure that they're cooked through. That's done. Actually, they might all be done. Let's see. Yeah, I think we're all done. This one I'm leaving just to make sure. That's the really, really big one. Um, but everything else, We'll let it cool down and we'll start picking. So normally I would let these guys cool down all the way, but I just want to show you, for anyone new to the channel, uh, picking apart the head, you have two pieces of meat that run down the center of the head there. So there's these guys. Holy smokes, that's hot. <laughs> so that's extra meat right there. And then that meat, if you take this down, you have the cheek right there. It is very hot. And then behind the head, you have the collar. And look at all that. And the collar, you got to pick through. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Amazing. But the collar has all these little cavities of uh, meat that you can pick through and pick out. And now, I mean, look, look how moist and just juicy that is. But watch this. Oh. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that's it. And then you have the same thing on the other side. And that is one grouper head that will probably get about a pound of meat off of this head alone with the collars. And I got a few more to go through. So I'm going to pick these. And actually, we will meet back here in the morning to start the chili because it's got to cook for five hours. See you back here. So I know I show this every time, but I think it's important. Look at that. This whole bowl is filled. And I mean, a lot of it just white, beautiful meat. Still moist, as you can see. Yeah. I'm gonna, one thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a knife through all of this and kind of get it down, you know, so it's almost more like uh, shredded pork for the chili. All right, good morning. Uh, we are going to start chopping veg. I have my crock pot here. I uh, ended up not running a knife through the fish, but um, just pulling it like pork and shredding it almost. So we're gonna get everything going. Um, I have here two onions, some garlic, half a shallot that was floating around in the fridge, um, a poblano pe pepper, a cubanelle pepper and a jalapeno. Now, all of these, <laughs> all of these I'm gonna chop really, really fine. And uh, these guys I'm gonna leave a little bit more like dice sized. All right, let's get to chopping.
All right, now that we have everything diced up, we're gonna move over to the oven and we're gonna lightly saute this. Just sweat it down to get it started and then we're gonna put it into our crock pot. So the only thing that I'm gonna add to these veggies while they're uh, sauteing is a little bit of sea salt. Nothing else, all our other spices are gonna be added once we go into the crock pot. I'm doing everything at once. And I'm gonna wait until this starts simmering just, a, or sauteing just a little bit before I add that salt because that salt's gonna make everything release all of its moisture. So we're not completely cooking these down. All we're doing is just getting them sweated, getting them started so that when we throw them into the crock pot, they're not just cold and fighting the heat in there. So probably about two more minutes and then we'll dump them in the pot. All right, so as you can see, things are starting to get just a little bit translucent. I don't really want any color on any of this, so. We are done and going to the pot. All right, so because I put it in the fridge and uh, all the gelatin kind of kind of sealed up, that's our fish. But once that warms up, but that's exactly what we want is all that gelatin that wouldn't be in a uh, filet is inside this meat. And once that heats up, that'll break up inside, so. Although it may not look attractive right now, it's okay. And in with our veg. So I have one can of diced tomatoes. And then I didn't show it on this episode, but I feel like you've seen it enough. Um, I, with the racks, made a really simple fish stock. And that's cold, so it's congealed also, but all this is going to warm up. So I'm going to put two ladles of that in. Normally for chili, I would use beef stock, but we had those racks, so why not? We always kind of keep a running uh, supply of fish stock in the house. And I also put always a little bit of Worcestershire into my chili, but... I picked up this really good hot sauce, Lake Tahoe Sauce Company, and it has a lot of Worcestershire flavor, and it's a local sauce, and they have nothing added in there. It's all natural ingredients. There's no xanthan gum or anything like that. So this is really good. We're going to put a very healthy amount in here. And that's also not too hot. It has a nice taste on it. Smoked paprika. Cumin. I'm doing about a tablespoon of all of these. Coriander. A little bit of onion powder. Some chipotle. garlic powder and then I have beans but we're gonna add those later so now give this a little bit of a mix and then we're gonna throw the lid on and I will see you in about three hours I almost forgot one uh, important thing pepper Okay, now I'll see you in three hours. So it's been about, hmm, been about three hours. And still have a lot of moisture, which is good. Still need those tomatoes and everything else to cook down. Like I said, I'm gonna let this go for five hours minimum, which sounds a little crazy, but now the fish is looking more like shredded pork. I'm gonna give a taste just for seasoning. 
See if we need any salt or anything. That doesn't need anything. <laughs> that is really good. And the fish is still very, very moist and I think it's gonna hold up until the end there. Again, you couldn't do this with a filet. It would dry out and become chalky. But that head meat, man. Okay, so now I'm gonna add beans. And I'm gonna drain. Sometimes I do dry beans and you put them in in the beginning and let them go, but I actually really like Goya beans. Um, so here's a big question. Do beans belong in chili? And for all of you that say, no, beans don't belong in chili, where in Texas are you from? <laughs> all right, so we're gonna strain these because I don't need any more moisture in here. So give me two seconds to do that. I'm gonna strain and rinse my beans. Okay, in we go. And one small can of pinto beans. Same thing, rinsed and strained. Now after a certain point when everything is cooked down and married and I, it's where I want it to be, to get the moisture level where I want it to be, I might let it ride without the, uh, without the lid on, just to get rid of some of that excess moisture. But for right now, I think we're good. It might not take on that brown color that chili has, but let me tell you, the smell is there. It smells and tastes like chili. Okay, see you in another two. Okay, I lied, I am gonna adjust it just a little bit. It could take on a little bit more heat. And uh, again, I'm gonna go with that Lake Tahoe uh, Sauce Co. Cause it's got that little bit of Worcestershire taste to it, which will also add nice flavor and it's got a little bit of heat. So I'm probably just gonna empty that bottle right in. This is a big batch of chili. <laughs> it could take it. Okay, so it is now almost five o'clock. So it's actually been about six hours that this has been going. And this is why I love chili because you can set it up, walk away, and then come back to it, it's finished. This couldn't look more perfect. This actually looks like pulled pork. And oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Right? <laughs> and it smells pretty divine. I'm gonna start dishing out bowls here. Well, I sincerely hope that it's good because we have a lifetime amount of chili here. <laughs> so I'm gonna dress these like I would any chili and forget that it's fish. So a little bit of shredded cheese. Little dollop of sour cream and some scallion. All right, we're digging in. We got everybody working. <laughs> <laughs> so here you go. Now, truth be told. Truth be told, this is like Aaron's third bowl. <laughs> I tasted it while Will was gone. <laughs> I I have not seen this before, there and this go. looks bomb. <laughs> and it does look like pulled pork. It does. It actually tastes like pulled pork. All right, I'm. What do you? Oh, what do you? You have secret. Well, I'm not gonna taint it. You wouldn't, with that yet. You wouldn't think so. It pairs really nicely with cornbread. <laughs> All right. Fish and I'm going in. It looks really hot. It is very hot. Oh, the beans. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Your uncle's going to be upset. There's cheese on I know. I'm sorry, Uncle Joe. <laughs> the dairy and fish. Oh, my God. So the most, besides <laughs> the fact that it's unbelievably tasting, 
unbelievable tasting. You would never in a million years know that was fish. Never. It literally has the consistency of pork. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, and the spice eaten, is That's why like... I've already eaten two bowls today. My third bowl. <laughs> you nailed it. All right. Yeah, it's good. it's really good. It is really, really good. Again, leave in the comments, beans or no beans and chili. I want to know. Wait, Miss Texas. <laughs> beans or no beans? Beans. <laughs> beans? Wow. Someone from Texas that actually wants beans in their chili. I like beans, though, so okay. I know it's very controversial, but whatever. All right, all right. I this I the fish is not even close to dry. It is it's amazing. So you've done this is like stupid. But I'm not just saying this just to say it. You've done a lot of unbelievable dishes as far as innovation goes. Mm. This is like top 2. It's like <laughs> you can't I can't explain how good it is and how it doesn't taste like fish. Like I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's just it's the the flavors are it's hard it's to explain. Perfect. So so I think it's a good thing, not not in the fact that it doesn't taste like fish to hide the fish, but in the fact of that that fish was going into the garbage and someone might go, yeah, I don't want to eat a fish head. It's kind of fishy. I don't want to eat collars. There's no fishy taste. And I even used fish broth to build the, the chili and there's zero fish taste. These guys have had my chili that I've made from ground beef and this tastes exactly like it I, it, yeah. you, it, it, it tastes like meat. literally the same <laughs> well all right guys um if you like this episode you know the drill hit like hit subscribe share it i'd see uh in my stats that you guys have been sharing the videos and i appreciate that so much that's such a help that's a really big thing and also want to give a shout out to you guys for buying the hats we'll do another round of them uh you guys were pretty fast those went quick so thank you very much for that and we will see you on the next one. <laughs> see you. All right, so you guys know by now, Aaron and Madeline, I could put anything in front of them and they say, oh, this is so good, this is so good. So now I have three other opinions on the fish head chili. You guys introduce yourselves here. Hey, I'm Brian Arneson and this is right on point. <laughs> Drew Young and absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Oh, never, sure. never had anything like it. All Love right. It. <laughs> so, and you had said that you could taste the fish a little bit. Taste a little bit on the front and then just a little bit on the long finish. But the rest of it is absolutely a barbecue chili. All right. And texture-wise, very pulled pork-esque. Awesome. All right. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Now... Drew a long time ago was busting my chops on some farm salmon. Just, just a little bit, but we're having fun. So it's actually really nice to meet a subscriber and get to have that conversation in person. It's, uh, you know, because over the comments, things can seem so aggressive. And it's nice to uh, get a chance to civilly over food <laughs> talk, talk concepts and ideas. Well, all right, guys. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That's a good